7% in 09. Thus far, this massive amount of debt has been accompanied by slower economic growth. They're also printing money like crazy people. China, which so many people think is going to take us over, are dealing with their own problems. Let's not forget they had, uh, what, over 100,000 poisonous dead pigs floating down a major river. Um, their one-child policy has created a lopsided population where there will soon be two will be so many older retirees than younger workers who can support them. While many developed countries are struggling with the financial burdens of supporting their large aging population, at least they didn't spend a whole generation forcing people out of having children. Um, it says, if history is a lesson, a collapse of China will make the land into a hell on earth. Throughout history, anytime China hasn't been united behind a strong centralized government, they are embroiled in bloodshed and chaos. I do not believe, like this author does, that China is going to surpass us. And one of the reasons I don't think it's going to happen is because of what we're seeing here. It says uh, China considers its 1.3 billion citizens to be a problem. That's because of the way that they've run the country into the ground. And you cannot, a communist nation is not going to take over the major superpower of the world like America has, because while America is going in the direction of communism, America is losing control because of its communistic practices. So China is not going to be able to step up and hold that reign for very long. I wouldn't lose sleep over that. Two more quick ones, RT. Uh, this is pretty amazing. 10,000 year old Indian cave paintings of aliens, spaceship puzzles archaeologists. Prehistoric paintings in a cave in India may indicate that alien travelers visited the site eons ago. An archaeologist says the paintings depict what appear to be humanoids with featureless faces and a tripod object that could be a vehicle. The particular find was discovered in a cave under the Charama region in Kankar district in the Indian state of Chhattisgarh. Uh, C H H A T I S G R H. Good luck. Preliminary dating says the pictures are at least 10,000 years old. And reports the times of India. I am seeing many old paintings right here. Archaeologist J.R. Bagat believes that the paintings can serve as evidence that the paleocontact hypothesis, which says that prehistoric times in Earth had uh, that, that says that in prehistoric times Earth was visited by members of an advanced alien civilization. The findings suggest that humans in prehistoric times may have seen or imagined beings from other planets which will create curiosity among the researchers. There's no way that all the drawings can look exactly the same if they're imagining it because either they were flying, what, you had people in Guatemala going to India to, to see these people and they drew the same people or are you trying to say that they were flying back and forth? If they were flying back and forth, so, I mean, whatever the answer is, it isn't that they imagined it, because it looks like every other uh, drawing that depicts what is clearly space people. It says, the caves come under the village of Chendai and Gotitola. Local residents have an ancient tale of Rohila people, or the small ones, who used to come from the sky and took away villagers never to return. The paintings are done in natural colors and have hardly faded despite the years. The strangely carved figures are seen holding weapon-like objects and do not have clear features. It is interesting because these all line up. Am I saying that I think we were visited by aliens? I'm not a nutcase, but I think it's more likely we were than weren't. But again, I don't dedicate a lot of show time to it because it's the correct views. And who knows what the correct view is on that. But I will say this, they didn't imagine it. Um, last thing I want to get to, prisonplanet.com. And if you like the science stuff, there is news from the science front every Saturday at 2 p.m. That is the segment of the Media Speaks that I do, along with the regular commentary. The dum de dum de of the day. Uh, next Monday, uh, I plan on doing the dunce cap of the month. This is one of the uh, stories that didn't win it, but came close. Yahoo! News equates videotaping cops with wanting to kill them. Now, when I went to Bilderberg, look up Bilderberg, Why It Mattered to me on YouTube. It's posted. It's the movie that Christelle and I made. When I made this movie, I filmed cops, and cops filmed me. Does that mean they wanted to kill me? I didn't think so. Here we go. 
A Yahoo News story published today equates concerns about police brutality with the militarization of law enforcement and videotaping cops with wanting to carry out violent murders on police officers. That's why I got the dumb of the day. In a piece entitled Online Rants, Anti-Government Radicals Fuel Fear of U.S. Cop Killings, senior national reporter for Yahoo, Jason Sickle, cites the murders of Las Vegas police officers Alan Beck and Igor Soldo last month to make the case that there is an exploding right-wing movement which is creating anxiety about attacks against police. Um, I think it's mostly thug and gang culture that largely vote Democrat that is actually killing the most cops, not the uh, right-wing movement of which a few nutcases exist, like any movement. Sickles notes the cop killer Jared Miller posted on of his intention to murder law enforcement officers on a Facebook page belonging to Cop Block, an organization that encourages citizens to document examples of police brutality. It's a great site. The fact that the organization has over 780,000 Facebook fans, all but one of whom have never murdered a police officer, doesn't prevent Sickles from honing in on the group as being partly responsible for the deaths of Beck and Soldo. That means that uh, we're going back to the old days now. If, if, if your son shoots himself, you blame Judas Priest. Um, if someone listens to this show and hurts somebody, even though I preach nonviolence all the time, it's somehow be my fault. After spending almost an entire article equating the murders with cop murders with cop, cop block, <laughs> Freudian slip, Sickles then notes that the organization encourages the public to submit home videos, photos, and stories of rogue officers for discussion. The hit piece then borders, broadens, excuse me, out into the wider implications that concerns expressed online about the economic crisis, proposed gun control, and Barack's election. NSS spying, oh, I guess I'm in trouble now, and the mil militarization of police are intimately connected with violence and extremism. No, I would say gang and thug culture is pretty close to uh, extremism. You know, that's what I would say. I think, uh, I think there's a lot of things we're dealing with that are a lot more dangerous than people that like the Constitution. It says, um, Sickles fails to mention the case of Kelly Thomas, who was a homeless man who was pummeled into a coma as he begged for his life during an incident in 11 for just, uh, you know, never bothered to mention it. Nope. Doesn't say anything about 30-year-old James Byrd who was executed in Albuquerque by police for the crime of camping illegally on a hill. Nope. Doesn't say anything about Americans killed by police in the United States that now outnumbers the amount of U.S. troops killed in Iraq. Over 5,000 Americans have been killed by cops since 9-11, a figure that suggests Americans should be more fearful of local cops than terrorists. And it goes on and on and on. It says, uh, 20% of all homicides in Seattle are carried out by cops. Now, granted, a lot of them, a lot of that is, you know, the, the gang culture. Gangs trying to kill each other and uh, police get in it. But not these huge numbers we're seeing. And that is why they got the dumb of the day. Um, good job there, sickle at Yahoo. You won the dumdy of the day. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Please do me a favor and email him and let him know you think he's an idiot. Also, check out the work of Kyle Court, D. Lake, and myself on The Media Speaks. This isn't like most news organizations. Um, we don't always agree on things, and we encourage that there. We're, we're not parrots for each other. If we have differing views, go to Facebook. You'll see that different members of the same team, of which we all support, will vehemently stand up for the side that we have. And you know what? We all support each other doing it completely. Last but not least, if you can, uh, Amazon.com, look up Asleep Unknowing, The Lucky Leprechaun, or Risen, a persuasive essay on the historicity of the resurrection of Christ, because I've written them and they are for sale there. And if you'd like to donate to the show, The Correct Views at Hotmail.com, every penny that you give to me goes towards a better show, but probably not a longer one. This one clocked in at 43 minutes. Good night, friends. God bless.